Cash, nice to see you. You've been out uh, around Oxfordshire, Neil McWilliams helping you, your mum helping you. What have yeah. you actually been doing? So, uh, obviously, everyone knows that um, the lockdown period hasn't helped a lot of players with injuries and stuff. And, you know, again, I've, I've tried to keep myself sane as I could do with all of this time. Between Kashmir, coming back straight into lockdown, the injury's been really bad. So, back, back and forth with specialists and MRIs. So, I decided to focus efforts elsewhere. And with Football for Peace, we've been doing a lot of work. Um, but then, obviously, with lockdown, things have changed. So, there's not, not we can do a lot in, 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 the, in the community. So we looked at some of the most um, pressing issues and current, because of the challenges faced by COVID, uh, one of them is really around pressing with the poverty. And um, so we looked at some partners that are delivering in this space and Mezat, who's a friend um, and his agent, I looked at some of the work that he's been doing actually for a long time was delivering um, 10,000 meals every, every um, couple of weeks across London uh, to the most vulnerable and needy. And I thought, wait, this is an amazing opportunity because I know parts of Oxfordshire need, need support as well. So obviously my role as an ambassador in the club continues and uh, reached out to you guys. And hopefully we made a small contribution yesterday and, and that continued to this morning as well. There's a common misconception in the rest of the world that this is Oxford and that there aren't people who need this food delivered. Absolutely yeah. the case, is it? No, I, I mean, to be honest, I didn't even, I didn't even know that before I came to Oxford and that perception of Oxford remains and you know um, some of the other areas uh, around the stadium etc um, and I think it's amazing work that you know we can actually not only just tangibly support but also raise awareness of it outside of Oxford I think that's really important. You um, couldn't do this on your own I know you want to thank a few people who've helped you out with this. Yeah oh my god what, what a tall order um, one that I mean, 10,000 meals, it's, it's a major thing. And over the Christmas period, um, it's amazing. You know, all the people involved from the chef, Stefan Polan is, um, he's actually the head chef at um, Wembley Stadium. He's also, he also um, is cooking for the Queen on uh, different occasions. And for him to be spearheading this and cooking fresh organic meals, um, some of the stuff that we did in London uh, with the local school, the, the normal meals that were going out with support were just like a pack of crisps and mm. buns, etc. Then to have someone like Stefan come on board and support that through the 39 Steps Cafe, it's, um, you know, for them, without them, this would definitely not happen. Meza, obviously, being one of the most philanthropic players, um, he's been doing this for a long time and he's obviously garnered a lot of other players that are supporting him. And then I came along to extend that reach out of London. So um, him involved in and Dr. Urquhart, who's his manager. Um, but apart of Aside from the people who've done it, I think it's also a massive thank you to the volunteers. Me being there yesterday and to see Emily at the food bank and everyone that was there supporting, I think it, it just, it's very humbling to see how many people, like how the community actually support each other. And I think sometimes when you, when, when you zoom out of it, you don't actually realise on the interaction of people and how important that is, how important. Have you considered changing it to football for peas? See, peas, vegetables, see, that's good for me. <laughs> Yeah, I can help you with that banner. That's for the, the, that's for the ones with the comms department, but yeah. Damn, yeah, let, let me in. Uh, just a uh, final thing, Football for Peace, these are troubled times all around the world. How yep. is the movement going? What, what's the latest from you and Football for Peace? So um, the programme still continue in Kashmir um, as our ongoing efforts. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there. The season started again, um, but the season's being held in Calcutta now, so it's out, it's out of actually Kashmir. However, for the first time ever, we've collaborated with Royal Kashmir. We've created an interstate tournament and also supported a women's team, which is the first actually in India, let alone somewhere like Kashmir, which is so troubled. Um, so the work's continuing there. And um, hopefully we're looking at a nationwide campaign here with Football for Peace on helping um, more underprivileged and underrepresented communities to get into sport. Because you've seen in the news, probably Chris as well, on how much... Um, a lot of the effects of uh, equality and diversity. And I think we're trying to look at how we can really hone into that and really use the brand power and support of football for peace to try and reduce inequalities and discrimination at grassroots level um, and really push that agenda. And I think that was one of my key, key things coming into Oxford as well on how we could potentially help the local community from a BAME background to get involved in the game as well. You're doing amazing work, Cash.
Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Uh, thank, thank you, you to, uh, to all the fans out and the family at uh, Oxford. So hopefully we'll see you soon.